In the year 1086, the Doomsday Book was finally completed. A huge undertaking for its time. The first comprehensive store of national information. 900 years on, astonishingly, that achievement has never been repeated until now. In a major national initiative led by the BBC, there's a new Doomsday Project to celebrate the 900th anniversary of the original and it'll fill a surprising gap in information, combining words, pictures, graphics and data to provide a detailed portrait of the land of the United Kingdom and the life of its people. It's a massive enterprise, not a time capsule, but a business and educational reference work with over a quarter of a million pages incorporating 24,000 maps, 50,000 photographs, vast amounts of research data and original survey information, plus moving pictures and sound. In total, there'll be around 500 million computer bytes of information. That's equivalent to over a thousand floppy disks or about 300 volumes of reference books and textbooks. What's more, that information will be very easily accessible. It'll use the most up-to-date electronic publishing technology, interactive video disk. This is a powerful new method of information presentation, and it's rapidly finding applications in business and in education. In essence, it combines the high-quality pictures from a video disk with a suitable microcomputer to provide a system which is able to respond to the needs and instructions of the user. And Doomsday has made a major technical innovation, because stored on the Doomsday disks, as well as conventional audio-visual information, there'll be enormous quantities of digital data and computer programs. And incidentally, it's planned that the Doomsday Disks will rapidly be followed by a wide range of other interactive software which uses this versatile new format. The Doomsday package is based on four elements. A double album of 12-inch laser vision disks capable of holding both pictures and data, which are played on a new interactive optical player currently being developed by Philips Electronics. It takes instructions from one of the new master series BBC microcomputers from Acorn computers. And the output of that is in turn displayed on a colour monitor. Now this is a typical workstation. You select a video disc that's read by laser. You put it into the disc machine and you can find and manipulate information simply by entering commands on the micro keyboard. Or you can use a tracker ball to move a pointer on the screen. The new project comes in two parts, which aim to represent contemporary Britain from two different points of view. On one disc, the national disc, there's the factual view, with formal statistics and reports covering the whole country. The other, the community disc, is about attitudes. It's, if you like, the popular view, drawn from a public survey commissioned for the Doomsday Project. Turning first to the national disc, this will bring together material in data, text and picture form on a wide range of subjects. It'll include a wealth of detailed national statistical information supplemented by published articles from newspapers and magazines, extracts from Hansard and other specialist sources, and over 2,000 commissioned essays. It'll also have exclusive data gathered by the project's one million local contributors, detailing land cover and amenities, from shops to post offices, banks to football grounds. To give an idea of the enormous breadth of this information, let's have a look at the Doomsday Project Index. Now, to make this system user-friendly, in other words, simple, flexible and responsive, it's organised like a thesaurus rather than a conventional index. Every idea in it gives rise to many others, like a family tree spreading out into more and more branches. The national disc is divided into four central subject areas, culture, economy, society and environment. Take environment. This spreads out into a series of sub-areas, agriculture, climate, conservation, forestry, geology and so on. Take one of those in turn, say agriculture, and its branches include foodstuffs, crops, livestock, farm types, fertilisers. Select livestock now and we can pursue that down two further subdivisions to end at the system's final level of information. In this case, it's a set of colour pictures of cattle breeds. Now multiply that by all the strands and all the branches of all four subject areas and you get some idea of the enormous range of Doomsday. 
So that you don't have to work your way right through the index, there's a shortcut called a keyword. You enter one or more keywords which you think are relevant to the subject that you'd like to explore. Now, this is a prototype system, and its response times may not fully represent the final product. But let's try, say, royal family. Now, the system returns with a long list of items that it holds on the subject, and supposing we now select item two, royal wedding. It's a comprehensive set of pictures from the famous event. There are many picture sets on the disc, each containing up to a hundred photographs, culled from picture libraries, famous photographers, specialist archives, and from a national photographic competition. Well, now let's take an example from sport and look at athletics. Suppose we select the London Marathon from 1985. Well, we find a video clip complete with sound. In fact, the Doomsday Discs feature moving pictures of dozens of events. As well as pictures, the system may offer text or data enhanced by computer graphics. Let's key in newspapers. Now let's select option eight. And it's a data set on newspaper readership presented, as you can see, in tabular form. Here, for example, gradually building up on screen are the Daily Mail sales figures for the southeast region over the years 1973 and building up to 1984. Now, of course, Doomsday is interactive. That is, you can modify the display so that it gives you exactly what you want. So in this case, you could select data for other newspapers or for other regions. Now, here's the Daily Mail readership in three different regions for one specific year, in this case, it's 1983. And you can change the form of presentation too. In this case, we've moved it from a bar chart to a pie chart, in case that's what you prefer. And there's another very powerful feature. Many parts of the database can be displayed in map form. Suppose you want to examine population densities in Greater London. Well, first, the system displays a background map. Then the micro selects data from the 1981 population census. It turns it into graphics form and it overlays the map with a transparent colored representation of population density. The white squares here represent less than 50 people and at the upper end, the blue represent over 12,000 people. Well, now the user can interact with the display. For instance, you can vary the color or if you want, you can alter the class intervals or the size of the squares. Or you can compare this display with another one, say, housing, on the same background map. Here's the pattern of information presented in one kilometer squares. And you can even calculate a measure of statistical correlation between the two displays. This interaction between user and screen display is fundamental to the doomsday system. Graphs, charts, tables, they can all be drawn and redrawn. And to help you get the most out of the system, There'll also be comprehensive instructions at every stage. Now, in all, there'll be over 6,000 data sets on the national disk. The sources for this vast database have been selected with the guidance of an editorial board of professional researchers from major national bodies. The main results of the latest census are included, along with government reports such as the General Household Survey, the Family Expenditure Survey, extracts from social trends, and other statistical abstracts. And also playing a major part in the project are the National Data Archive at the University of Essex, along with the Centre for Urban and Regional Studies, the Institute of Terrestrial Ecology, and Birkbeck College. Now, the other Doomsday Disc, the Community Disc, is based on Ordnance Survey maps for the whole of the UK, plus, in what has been the most publicised aspect of the project, information and opinions compiled by schools and community groups throughout the country. 14,000 schools, that's almost half the primary and secondary schools in the United Kingdom, took part. They completed surveys of three by four kilometer sections under the supervision of 125 local authority coordinators. This has been a unique opportunity for schools to gain practical experience in collecting data. It's introduced many students to microcomputers in a national educational project, as well as improving their awareness of their local communities. With the community disk loaded, 
the system first displays a map of the whole of the United Kingdom. Now you can control it by using a tracker ball which moves the pointer over the screen to indicate the area that you're interested in. Now let's say you wanted to look at southern Britain. Well now the system throws up a larger scale map. And then you can choose again, say Cornwall, and go even further to a scale of 1 to 50,000. And that's the metric version of the old 1 inch to the 1 mile maps. Well now it's possible to move in any direction. In effect, to walk across the map, travelling the whole country. If you want to know more about a particular place, well that's easy. Here, for example, is a village with an unusual name, Probus. If you want, you can see what it looks like. In fact, there are three photographs for most of the communities in the country. In addition, the survey teams have written about their areas. Here's the contents page, and in this case, you can select, for example, an essay on Probus Village, now and then. And these options, text, map, or photo, are available at each scale or at each level. Now come out again to the general Cornwall map, and the picture is an aerial view. Zoom right out to the whole of the UK, and there now is a satellite photograph. In certain areas of special interest, even more detailed maps are available. For example, street maps of city centres. And a further zoom in reveals a floor plan of buildings or sites of interest. Also on the disc, there'll be the Ordnance Survey Gazetteer of over a quarter of a million place names. So instead of using the maps, you can find your way somewhere simply by typing in its name. And, as on the national disc, you can also explore a particular topic by entering keywords. Clearly, there are thousands of applications for the Doomsday Project, for libraries and research archives as a compact information source, for local government as an aid in planning, in education as an unprecedented curricular resource, and in business as an invaluable tool in desktop research and analysis. Or, of course, in general, it can simply be used for casual browsing. Take an example. Doomsday contains substantial information about consumer consumption and markets. Suppose a company is thinking of bringing out a new type of vodka. The product manager might need quickly to find a test market where people don't currently drink the stuff very much. Well, here's the answer. A chart of the percentage of adults divided up by television areas who are heavy users of vodka. And Scotland, as you can see, comes out on top. Well, now you can interact with the display to find the percentage of light drinkers or those who don't drink vodka at all. And it turns out that it's Yorkshire where vodka drinking is least well established. Change the display again and you get the figures for that area alone. Again, the Doomsday's picture library of 50,000 photographs will be of direct use to business. For example, if an export agency is looking for innovative products to sell abroad, well, on the national disc is a comprehensive set of British products which have won recent Design Council awards. The Doomsday Discs will also include detailed information on leisure activities of great relevance to everyone, from advertising managers to regional planners. Here, for instance, is a bar chart showing how people in the English regions divide their time on a winter Saturday between participating in sports, watching sports, or do it yourself. And again, you can choose exactly what you want displayed. So if a television advertiser wants to know, say, which region is least busy with DIY at 5 p.m., well, that's at their fingertips. Here's another data set, this time showing activities on a summer Sunday in the national regions. You'll be able to choose between over 30 different types of areas or regions by which to display the data on the disks. In this case, you can see the proportion of people participating in religion, watching TV or eating and drinking throughout the day. Simply change a label on the screen and it's easy to make rapid comparisons. Here's another example, uh, perhaps for a company media buyer. The market share between four national newspapers graphically displayed year by year. And Doomsday could also offer such data as readership profiles by age and social groupings. In education, the Doomsday Project offers an unprecedented curricular resource, especially in subjects like geography, economics, environmental studies, social studies, history and statistics, but there are many others. Now suppose a school is going on a field outing to look at farming. The teacher could select several communities in the area and ask pupils to research them from the discs. Then there's the land cover survey, 
Students could work out in detail which of several different types of woodland and farmland cover the area that they're to visit. And on a more general level, all the national and regional statistics for agricultural production and for sales are in the Doomsday Project too. What's more, the disks have a fascinating feature. On the national disk are several surrogate journeys, contemporary environments, photographed from every possible angle and stored on the system. There are houses, a nature walk, a town centre and a farm. So before taking their field trip, pupils could have explored a farm inside the classroom. Now these walks are very extensive. This one features 2,000 photographs. The system tracks where the user is and allows him or her to move or to turn in any direction, right, left, backwards, forwards, and to view in close up or from a distance. Another feature on the disks with clear applications in mathematics and geography is the ability to measure distances and areas on the Ordnance Survey maps. Each map has a scale bar in kilometers or in miles, whichever you prefer. With it, you can use the tracker ball to measure directly from the screen. If you want to see how far it is from St. Austell to Falmouth, well, the answer is 27.15 kilometers as the crow flies. But uh, you can also measure the distance by road. Let's take the A390. And that works out at 34 and a half kilometers. What's more, there's measurement of areas. Now, this is an entertaining way of presenting what's often a difficult topic in the classroom. Just mark the corners, and the answer comes back in square kilometers. Clearly, the Doomsday Project represents an extraordinarily versatile resource. It'll give rapid access to information that, though theoretically in the public domain, is in practice often difficult to get hold of. Doomsday displays that information in a vivid way, and it's interactive, answering the questions you want to ask, not just those the compilers thought to ask on your behalf. It's an electronic exhibition of our time, an extraordinary desktop reference work for everyone who wants or needs to know about contemporary Britain. And along with its predecessor of nine centuries ago, the Doomsday Project is a remarkable national achievement.